Henry Howard Holmes, or H.H. H. Holmes, is the first serial killer in America, who allegedly killed nearly 200 people in while luring the victims into his hotel, the World's Fair Hotel in Chicago. For the crime he committed, he was sentenced to death by hanging in 1896. On June 11, 1965, a woman named Lucinda Monday gave birth to a boy named Hector Whale on Monday. Lucinda's husband named Clarence ran away from his responsibilities, making Lucinda a single mother. For this reason, when he was little, Hector was often abused by his mother, and because he received unpleasant treatment, when he was seven years old, he showed violent behavior at elementary school by hitting and threatening his friends. However, even though Hector has a dark past, when he grew up, he graduated from college majoring in psychology, and he was accepted to work as a special agent for the FBI. His name started to stick out when he managed to catch the famous serial killer named Manny Sherman, who is known as the Beast of Arkansas in January 1997 by using the psychological method he learned in college. Hector Monday was then given the authority to interrogate Manny Sherman. Where it is in this interrogation that everything will be revealed. Manny Sherman, a serial killer who allegedly killed 13 peoples, admitted that he did all of that because he was heavily inspired by the Holmes case. He even used the same method, lured his victims into the house and killed them in there. During the interrogation process, Manny Sherman told all the pleasure he felt when he saw how the victims suffered. On September 31,997, eight months after Manny Sherman was arrested, Chicago was once again shocked by the murder case of a man in his 50s and two weeks later, another human body was found floating in the river. After investigation, these two victims were killed in the same way. So the police officers determined that this was a new serial killer case, which they called the Shoeshine Killer. In order to investigate this case, FBI agent Hector Monday was assigned to conduct an investigation. Investigations were carried out from one place to another, one clue after another. But this famous FBI agent, Hector Monday, was unable to fully investigate the case. What really happened? To answer this question, we have to go back a few months ago. Back when Hector Monday was assigned to interrogate Manny Sherman. In the third interrogation, Manny Sherman told all of heinous deeds and expressed how fun they were. He talks about how the victim reacts when being tortured or after being killed is the beautiful work of art that he created. But what makes Manny Sherman dangerous is that during the interrogation process, he often tries to slowly manipulate Hector Monday. Ask people to list serial killers and they'll drop five, ten on you before they can think of any more. Ask them to name the detectives that caught those killers. No one is going to say a damn thing. No one knows. No one cares. No one makes movies about them. No one puts their faces on t-shirts. No one gives a shit. I've left my mark on the world. Have you? At this point, Hector starts to get confused about his own identity and decides to go see a Piscia Trust. Where the result of this meeting show that Hector is very obsessed with his work as FBI, don't have enough sleep, and it's starting to be difficult to maintain eye contact. Apart from that, Hector also told about how he couldn't sincerely accept the death of his mother, Lucinda Monday. In the last interrogation, Hector Monday, whose mind was already in chaos once again, tried to be manipulated by Manny Sherman. As a result of that, he lost control and beat Manny Sherman mercilessly. And he really enjoyed it. On June 17, 1998, one of the apartment residents heard Hector Monday screaming from inside the apartment and immediately reported it to the police. Police officer Stanley was sent there to investigate, but when he stepped inside, Hector Monday killed him immediately. This is where it was revealed that it turns out that new serial killer case that started happening in September 1997, known as the Shoeshine Killer, is Hector Monday himself. 
and because his mental state is disturbed, he doesn't understand who he is anymore, to the extent as the FBI. He is conducting an investigation into the murder case that he committed himself, explaining why he can fully investigate this case. Police officers were dispatched to look for Hector Monday and managed to find him in an abandoned warehouse. But when he was cornered, Hector created a huge explosion which immediately burned the warehouse where he was hitting. Investigating into the warehouse, they found the body of a man who had been burned to the ground, but judging by his teeth, the police officer managed to identify the body as that of Hector Monday. On the same day, the Shushine killer case was closed. However, this police conclusion was refuted by a crime book writer named Joseph Morello. Joseph Morello is a book writer famous for his writings about various serial killers in the world, including Holmes and Manny Sherman. Apart from writing books, he also makes a podcast with his wife, Michelle Morello, to discuss things that are still closely related to serial killers. So in one of the episodes of his podcast, Joseph said that he got various items of evidence regarding Hector Mundy's life story, some of which the police don't even have. He got it from an anonymous source who doesn't want to be named. But one of the pieces of evidence shows that actually Hector Monday faked his death in that abandoned warehouse. The body that the police found in the warehouse was the body of another person, whose teeth were removed and replaced with Hector Mundy's teeth, making the police mistake it for Hector Mundy's body. Joseph Morello believes that until the time the podcast was made, Hector Monday still out there, taking more lives. Joseph Morello's conjecture is correct, because the mysterious man in the mask and hat who we know as Grantham Dumit is actually Hector Monday. Let's investigate this further through the various clues scattered throughout the game. What is the proof that Grantham Dumit is Hector Monday? Throughout his murder castle, we can find several books or records that are closely related to his past such as a book that contains family trees Hector Monday and notes written by Mr. Thompson as the principal of the school where Hector Monday attended school. In this note, Mr. Thompson told Lucinda that his son, Hector often commits acts of violence against his friends. So on the back of the note, Hector wrote down his disappointment to Mr. Thompson's. Beside that, on the ground floor of the lighthouse tower, we can also find an animatronic that is made to resemble a grandmother. It was Lucinda Monday, considering that Hector still couldn't sincerely accept his mother's. Through several interrogation processes, we understand that Manny Sherman, the serial killer known as the Beast of Arkansas, has indirectly become Hector Mundy's mentor. It was he who manipulated Hector to become a serial killer. Well, Manny Sherman was given the death penalty for the murder he committed. But just a few weeks later, someone took his body out of the grave. Until now, the police don't know the identity of the suspect, but we all know. The person who took out Manny Sherman's body is Hector Monday himself. The proof is in one of the chapters. When we use Jamie's point of view, we can see a male animatronic smoking in the interrogation room. The animatronic is made to resemble Manny Sherman with a mixture of corpses, just like what Hector Monday did to his mother. His motive for doing that was to create work of art, as Manny Sherman taught him. Those are some pieces of evidence that show that the identity behind Grantham Dumit is Hector Monday. Now let's continue Hector Monday's story after he managed to fake his death. For years, the name Hector Monday was never heard of again, considering everyone thought he had died in a fire in the barn. But actually Hector has changed his name to Richard Belknap and pretends to be a good person. In August 2011, somehow, he managed to persuade a couple of lovers of a remote island owner named Mark and Jennifer to leave their wealth to him. After Mark and Jennifer died, the remote island officially belonged to Richard. And in January 2017, Richard has plans to carry out renovations to the hotel on the island, so that it is rebuilt to resemble the Holmes murder castle with the aim of being a tourist attraction. At this point, it's clear that Richard alias Hector has been obsessed with Holmes. The renovation process started on January 17, 2017 and lasted for about 10 weeks. The workers did installation of CCTV 
walls that can move, renovation of the spa area, construction of bars, and so on. However, as time went on, some irregularities started to occur. They often admit that they have lost things, and one by one the people who work, they mysteriously disappear. The hotel renovation was completed in March 2017, but all the workers involved just disappeared. What actually happened behind the scenes is they were all killed by Richard, Belknap. Jesse Clark was pushed down from a great height, Laura Murphy was stabbed, Frank was hanged, while Monica and Ryan were forced to play a deadly game. Fifthly, this construction worker once again made the mannequin work of art. Richard conveyed his condolences to the leader of the renovation project, named Kelly for the death of his five crew, saying that their deaths were purely an accident. In June, Richard used the name Brandon on an online site to make a purchase on Holmes costume sets and three months later, he bought a Holmes hat. Now with all the preparations, Hector disguised his name to Grantham Dumas and started to carry out the action in 2022. The first five victims came on September 29, 2022, consisting of Brad, Rachel, Jackie, Scott and Grace. Then on October 5th, Harrison, Lewis, Thomas, Cecile and Kurt. And on October 19th, the Morello family became victims, including Joseph Morello, crime book author and podcast creator, Michelle his wife, Francis his sister, Natalie his first daughter, Bethany their second daughter, and Connie their pet dog. It was only on October 26, five Lonnet Entertainment's film crew who became the victims, Charlie, Kate, Jamie, Mark and Erin. It's possible that Dermot wanted to kill Morello's family because Joseph Morello has the closest evidence, his identity, considering that Jasper Morello knows that Hector Monday is still out there. Joseph was provoked to come because in the invitation letter, Dumit mentioned that he had a hotel based on the Holmes murder castle, which was what Joseph was looking for as a crime book writer. Unfortunately, this visit ended in the death of his family. Francis was drowned in the bathtub, Natalie was killed in the freezer room, and Michelle was beheaded. While he himself was used to invite the Lonnet Entertainment film crew by, threatening his daughter's life, before then both were shot dead using a sniper in the middle of an attempt to escape from the island. The man in the yellow jacket who is seen hanging around the hotel area is Dumat, disguise who is watching their movements, but the guy in the yellow jacket that Charlie killed in one of the traps was just an animatronic with a blood bag. Meanwhile, the school board located near the stairs is the number of murder victims committed by H.H. Holmes plus Dumat. The fate of the Lonnet Entertainment film crew is determined by how you play the game The Devil in Me, who is alive and who is dead. Are they safe or even used like Joseph Morello and end up dead? But for sure, Dumat is still alive and roaming freely out there, hunting for other victims. So that's the story of the closing game of the Dark Picture Anthology Season 1, according to our observations. What do you think? Please just give your opinion in the comment below. Don't forget to give a like, if you like our content. And of course a big thank you to all of you who have watched this video. See you guys in the next video.